Hi gang, Scott Davenport here. In this video, I'm talking about the X-Rite i1 Studio Color Calibrator. This is something I picked up about a month ago as I record this, and I spoke with the folks at X-Rite at the Photocon LA show. Wanted to get something that would calibrate more than just my monitor. Read good things about X-Rite, and after speaking with the folks, the choice for me was the i1 Studio. That's this guy right here. And in the box, you get the piece of hardware, the color calibrator itself which is this here. It comes in this kind of a soft case to help protect it. And when you lean it up against your monitor, you're not going to scratch your screen. You also get a color card. So this guy here, and I'll toss this into my bag. And so if I'm going to film video uh, out in the field, just hold this up in front of me for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to get a good color checker. And I can use it in the software later on when I'm doing the post-processing on video to make sure I've got decent valid color. And so what I'm going to do in this video is go through the display calibration. I've, been, I've done that a couple of times now already. And in the future, as I do the printer and so forth, I'll, uh, I'll add that in as well as a future video because it's one of the things that drew me to getting the, uh, the X-Rite is I can do my displays. So machine, laptop, I can do smart devices. So if I wanted to color calibrate my iPhone, I could. I can do printers. I can do it both in color and black and white. There's also support for projectors and scanners. You know, some devices I don't have, uh, but hey, I'm not gonna you know sh shake off the flexibility the device will give me if I ever have one of those in the future. I'm gonna be set. So let's go through what we do with the display calibration here. So you get the box of stuff, you download the software, and you get a uh, uh, an interface that is is very straightforward. On the left hand side, you choose what you're gonna calibrate. And then here in this major part of the window, it's going to walk you through all the different steps you need to do. So we're going to do the display. And the first choice we have is what we predominantly use our computer for. Now you got choices of photo, video, or of course custom. You can set any of these the way you like. I'm predominantly a still photographer, so I'm going to choose photo as my main use for my machine. That's where I really want to make sure I have accurate color representation. Now I'm also using a Mac. And the Mac screens are beautiful. They also have quite a bit of glare, especially if there's direct light shining on the screen. Now I've made uh, you know choices in my space here not to have direct light hit the screen, but nevertheless, I want to turn on this flare correct. So as the measurements are made, it's going to adjust for any of that flare and you know glare coming off the screen. We'll go to the next screen, and then we need to calibrate the device. So I'll make sure we're connected here. I'm going to plug the USB cord all the way in to my device. All right, once we're fully connected, the first thing to do is rotate this dial on the device to the calibrate position. There's a few positions for measuring ambient light or working with projectors, or doing the actual measurement. One of those settings is calibrate. And I'll show you how this rotation works outside of the case. I tend to keep the device inside this case once I'm familiar with how to rotate the dials. And the screen will show me as I rotate things to what position that I end up in. Once in the calibrate position, I'll go ahead and press the calibrate button. And that takes a few moments for the device to kind of level set itself. There isn't measurement taking place. I have it inside the device. The eyelet is closed on the bottom of the case. So there's no light going out there. It's just the device doing its thing, getting itself set up. Once calibration is done, we'll rotate the dial one more time, the down position, and we'll start to do the measurement process. You get this checkerboard of colors that's telling you you've got the device set into measure mode and you're ready to proceed with the next step. For the flare detection, it's so the next step. I'm gonna open up the bottom slot on the device so I can open up the measurement aperture there and do what it says on the screen. Hold this about 12 inches away and hit the next button. then position the device on the screen. Now when doing this, the strap that comes with the X-Rite, it's a counterweight. And so that's very nice. You drape it over the back of your monitor. It makes it easy enough to balance the device. Also, make sure the zipper is all the way to the base because otherwise you'll get a gap in between the X-Rite itself and your monitor. You don't want that. You don't want light creeping in. 
and the screen's going to start blinking through a variety of different colors, everything from bright whites right now to you know, reds, greens, blues, and so forth. And the, the colors itself, it, it occupies the entire screen, so you don't have to really be incredibly precise on positioning your i1 studio it can be anywhere relatively in the center of the screen and you're going to be absolutely fine now the process takes about five minutes to complete and so i'll just wait for it to finish and then we'll wrap up saving the profile once the software's gone through all the different color swatches you get returned to the measurement screen we go and we hit next and lastly, we give the profile a name and save it. Now, typically I'll just take the default name for the profile. It has a date built into it. And since I'll profile the display periodically, usually you know once a month, it, I, the name doesn't really matter to me. Now, a little bit of insider baseball here. Uh, I need to go and recalibrate my screen again after this because I have the studio lights on and those are certainly going to throw around different light than my normal editing. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll add studio lights to the name of the profile and go ahead and save that. And that way if I want to do any type of work and have the studio lights on, I've got a display profile that has a good calibration for that. So uh, there's nothing saying you can't have multiple you know, uh, ICC profiles if you have different conditions in which you edit. Maybe the room you're in has something going on in the daytime that's different than going on in the nighttime, or you can have different profiles for that. So that's a, you know, one little extra thing you can do with these various profiles. A final thing is the profile reminder, letting you know that you have this little bit of software that can run and remind you to calibrate your screen every so often. I'll just click OK and say that's great because I have that running. And that's the whole process. It's not difficult at all to get your monitor calibrated. The i1 Studio does a really good job and it will again calibrate other devices as well, printers, scanners, mobile devices. And I hope to follow up with some videos about doing print calibration in the future. If you got questions, feel free to hit me up, comments below, or through my website if you want to keep it private. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Thanks for watching.